643-1320 WILS. Today, the 20th anniversary of the uh, disappearance of a girl named Amber. 20 years ago, in fact, that is today, that is what set off what is now known as the Amber Alert. My next guest, Dr. Catherine Brown, is a professor of criminology at Tarleton State University in Fort Worth, Texas, where what well, was down there in Texas where the disappearance occurred. Dr. Brown, great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, back in 96. Was this a, a big story in Texas at the time? Or? It was absolutely a huge story in Texas, which is typical of public child abduction. Yeah. And what, now, this uh, girl, Amber, what, do we know what happened? Because she hasn't been found, right? This case is actually still unsolved. We do know what happened as far as that she was riding bikes with her her brother and was abducted. And so she was seen being pulled into a black truck as after they were riding on their bicycles, although her brother didn't actually see it happen at the moment. But so it was assumed that she was abducted by by a male driving a black truck. And now, what is it that happened there in Texas that led to this Amber Alert system now that we have? Well, actually, um, a, call, a caller into a radio um, show said that we have emergency alerts for weather, why couldn't we have had an emergency alert that a child had been abducted? Um, Obviously, when you have child abductions, there's a public outcry because as a nation and and as humans, we we think children should be protected. Mm -hmm. So this, this idea took hold and eventually legislation was passed in every state. And, um, the original caller to the radio station who had the idea just asked that the alert be named after Amber yeah. Hagerman so yeah. that, that she would be remembered. The, the alerts I think of recently, at least in Michigan, usually involve a parent that's abducting the child. So it's, a, it's actually a known person. Um, and does that, How much has, has it helped find children that have been taken? Well, Amber Alerts typically are not employed in stereotypical parental abductions, but they are employed when when there is concern that the child has been abducted, the child is in danger, and that there's enough description of the offender and or the vehicle that the child is in. Mm -hmm. So so stranger abductions like Amber Hagerman's case um, are actually far more unusual, and cases of abduction that end in murder are less than one in one half of one percent of all homicides. Less than one. States. What was that again? Less than one half of one percent of all homicides in the United States. So, stranger abductions of children that end in murder are incredibly rare. Mm-hmm. And so, the Amber Alert itself, how how effective has it really been? Then, if that's the case, well. The latest statistics with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children show as of about Christmas Eve that about 793 Amber Alerts had been deployed in cases where the children were recovered alive. Of course, there's no way of knowing if the child was actually recovered because the Amber Alert was issued or if there were other factors in that investigation. But it is one tool that is available to law enforcement and the public. I'm talking to to Dr. Catherine Brown. Brown at Tarleton uh, State University. You're also a, well, you're an expert in cold cases. In a case like this, 20 years ago, this girl disappears. Um, yeah. what, I mean, what, what is the likelihood of once it's been decades of a case being actually solved? Well, I don't know that there's an actual probability, but, but keep in mind, cases go cold for a reason, but, but tips turn up. Sometimes um, offenders do decide to talk or they change behavior. So this case is actually not, I believe, considered a cold case because active tips have come in enough. So I believe that they do actually have a full-time investigator um, assigned this case as part of the caseload. Mm. So there are cases, unfortunately, all over the United States that do remain unsolved of child abductions and and homicides of of children. But occasionally there is a success rate, which is the reason that they have cold case units and why a lot of departments do re-examine cases. Occasionally you have advances in technology or things that you can review that, that really you weren't aware of at the initial investigation. Are you talking about mind, DNA evidence, that kind of thing? Um, sometimes 
Sometimes it's forensic evidence. Um, in particular, technology changes there, and if, if evidence has been collected in a manner where it can be reexamined later. Mm-hmm. Occasionally, the investigations change hands, or sometimes when you have media attention, somebody thinks about something that they didn't come forward with mm-hmm. um, previously. And so how it, often it, is it that authorities have a pretty good idea that of who did a crime, and it may have been decades ago, but they just can't prove it, and so it's just left that way. Well, I don't know that we have actual statistics for that. I will tell you that the child abduction homicides have a fairly high solvability rate, about 76%, which is higher than than the homicides in general, and generally because these cases receive a lot of attention Mm -hmm. and a lot of resources. But there are cases that do um, remain unsolved, and unfortunately, occasionally, detectives do have a good suspect, somebody that for whatever reason they either couldn't charge the suspect mm-hmm. or the suspect dies. So they can't really close the case, but they, they might have a really good idea yeah. of, of who the actual offender yeah, was. It's got to be incredibly, fr- incredibly frustrating, I imagine, when uh, when law enforcement has a is almost certain who the perpetrator is, but they just they don't have that evidence to put him down. Um, yes, that's yeah. incredibly frustrating. <laughs> but at, at least that's a, that's a great um, stat that so many of these child abduction cases are solved. And you, you say it's just from the, the media attention alone that can just push authorities to, to put the resources in there? Well, there's a lot of resources. I think any time a child is missing, we do know that if children are going to be murdered in an abduction, they typically are murdered in under three hours, about 76% of the time. So any time a child is missing, um, immediate response is mm-hmm. put into place. And most big jurisdictions do have child abduction response teams or other networks that they yeah. bring in additional resources. There's that, what, 48 hours? There's a whole show about that, right? That 48 hours? Well, in homicides in general, um, your solvability rate decreases exponentially um, if the case is not solved in 48 hours. But obviously with abductions, we do know that your chances of a recovery of a child alive greatly diminishes as long as the child is, is missing. After 48 hours, yeah. that's uh, and Dr. Catherine Brown, she's a criminologist at Tarleton State University. It was 20 years ago today when uh, this uh, young girl Amber was abducted 1996 on this date. Dr. Brown, thank you so much. You're welcome.